Transformers Prime has received widespread acclaim, even from outside of the Transformers fandom. Over the course of the show's runtime, it won nine Daytime Emmy Awards, two Cine Awards and was nominated for several more, as well as consistently ranking as one of the hub's most popular programs. Within the fandom, the show quickly won fans over, an impressive feat for the chronological successor to the widely loved Transformers Animated. Qualities particularly celebrated include the cinematography, visuals and animation, voice acting, including the return of Peter Cullen and Frank Welker to the roles of Optimus Prime and Megatron, something the actors themselves rejoiced over, and characterization. There is also a great deal of praise given to the serious, more mature storytelling of Prime that had not been attempted in Transformers media since Beast Machines. For all of these reasons, it is usually considered one of the best Transformers cartoons. That said, the show is not universally loved, and not just because Bumblebee was better when he could speak. In the second season, the show's aforementioned budget problems were the cause of some of the most common complaints, in addition to necessitating two clip shows, an all but extinct concept in cartoons in the 2010s, the cash flow crisis caused several plot threads to suddenly be dropped, truncated in order to shrink the cast, break down and Arachnid were abruptly killed, written her respectively, despite being, feature of active subplots in order to eliminate the cost of their celebrity voice actors, as the characters performed by actors that were not part of the, main, cast, like Silas, Hardshell, and Dreadwing. Other complaints focused on the lack of build-up or foreshadowing for certain major threats like Unicron and the Predakens. In the case of the latter, former Hasbro employee Rick Alvarez confirmed that this was the result of Hasbro staff changes forcefully altering the direction of the show from what was intended. Another criticism had been made towards the lack of weight given to character deaths beyond Cliffjumper, usually resulting in anti-climax. A minority also lamented that the expensive animation budgeted the number of character models they could render, and thus led to a relatively small cast and an isolated setting.